What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. Do you have enough personal freedom or does your state regulate things a little too much like your guns, gambling, marriage, the devil's lettuce, education, high incarceration rate? Do they have strict nudity and sexuality laws like restricting nude beaches and strip clubs? Today's list is about what states are considered to have the most personal freedom. Keep in mind this isn't regulatory or fiscal freedoms where your taxes are high, land use is restricted, labor or occupational freedoms come into play on those ones? No, we're just looking at where people feel the government isn't getting in the way of their pursuit of happiness. Let's take a look. Number 10. Indiana. The Hoosier state is known as a pretty free state. In 2014, they legalized same-sex marriage, but it's not like it was really anything they enforced before. I mean, they had the Defense Marriage Act in 1996, which said marriages between a man and a woman. Now, I just broad brush that, but it's not like they were out really arresting people for it before 2014. When it comes to the devil's lettuce, you know, they get mixed reviews. It's not totally legal, but most people think it will be soon since it's really not something they're enforcing in most areas. Sure, if you're driving a cargo van just filled to the top with it, I'm sure you're going to do some time. But really recreational, they're not really enforcing it by most people's accounts. When it comes to your guns, it's not something you have to worry about. Your rights there are pretty well secure. You can get a concealed carry license, which some states it's next to impossible to get, but you can get one there. They do have some restrictions when it comes to the minimum age, but that's about it. There's a lot of ins and outs when it comes to firearm laws, and I'm just broad brushing it here. It's not like this is an in-depth thing, so I know I'm going to miss some things or some people will think I should have some information on it, and we're just broad brushing it. Indiana also has a good amount of strip clubs. They also ban the box, meaning if you're an ex-con, you've been arrested for something, they can't have that on applications, so you don't have to answer that. Legalized gambling also started in Indiana on September 1st, 2019. You could wage on college and pro sports, but this is weird. Betting on esports like computer games and high school sports is illegal. Number nine, Washington State. Washington is another state that's known for their freedom. They were one of the first states to fully legalize the devil's lettuce. They've got sports betting. The only sports betting you can't do in Washington is on local college teams, meaning in-state colleges. You can't bet on that, and you can't bet on any minor league sports. But the Indian casinos or whatever, they've got all the sports book and all that, and you could do whatever you want there. They also have strip clubs. They also ban the box, so you don't have to tell them if you're a convict. And they're a castle doctrine state, which this says if you shoot someone in your house, some cases in your work or your car even, that's an intruder, you're immune from prosecution in most situations. I mean, don't order Uber Eats and start shooting through the door when the guy rings the bell. And you should be fine as long as they're a legit intruder and are out to do you harm. Side note to that, inviting an ex-boyfriend over to the house to pick up mail that was delivered there uh, is not an intruder and you can't shoot him. Yeah, that's what some lady tried to pool in court one time. Number eight, Oregon. Oregon's another state where, yeah, your gun laws are pretty much set in stone. They're not going anywhere. They got tons of strip clubs and the devil's lettuce. Alcohol is a little bit weird because we still have to go to the special store for hard alcohol. You know, get beer and wine at the grocery store if you want. But to actually get, you know, hard alcohol, you gotta go to that state type liquor store. I know they're trying to change that, but who knows? Of course, Oregon has strip clubs and there's a nude beach not too far from my house, so they don't have a problem with that stuff. As a matter of fact, Portland has more strip clubs per capita than any other city in the United States. Tampa is a close second. Oregon legalized the devil's lettuce years ago, so that's not a problem. And when it comes to gambling, Oregon Lottery has their own sports betting app. I use it. I bet on football games all the time from my cell phone and it's run by the Oregon State Lottery. Back to firearm laws, it's another castle doctrine state. So if someone breaks into your house, you're within your rights to uh, take matters into your own hands. Now, that seems like a no-brainer. In some states, though, they have stand your ground, and there's another thing with a uh, duty to retreat. So if someone's trying to get into your house and you could leave without, you know, shooting them or anything like that, you're supposed to. Number seven, Vermont. Vermont, for all its, I don't know, people consider it a very liberal state or whatever, are the fifth most gun-friendly state in the United States. Now, that's an opinion, but they usually end up somewhere around 
four, five, six, seven. They're at least in the top 10 on most polls and surveys. They slipped down a little some years back. They changed some laws about the age you can own a firearm and high capacity magazines, things like that. The lettuce is fully legal here in Vermont, and they do have strip clubs. Not that many. They only got three in the entire state, but at least they have them, right? They also ban the box, so you don't have to mark that little box that say you've been convicted of a crime. That one I'm a little weird on. If you've been convicted of some kind of thing that has to do with fraud or embezzlement or something like that, they should be able to ask you that if you're applying for a bank or something like that. But, I mean, you're supposed to pay your debt, and your debt's supposed to be paid, and you should be able to live your life normally. So I understand why they ban the box. That's just my opinion. Number six, New Hampshire. New Hampshire and Vermont are always right next to each other no matter what the subject is. When it comes to ban the box, they're not. New Hampshire, you gotta check the box, but they also have three strip clubs just like Vermont. The lettuce isn't totally legalized here. They do have sports betting, but what really makes them stand out, they have no seatbelt law and you don't have to wear a helmet if you're riding a motorcycle. They're only one of three states that don't require a helmet. That one makes them kind of stand out here. Along with all that, they are very much considered a gun-friendly state. Number five, Alaska. Alaska is definitely one of the most gun-friendly states we have in the Union. The electric lettuce is totally legal here. Homeschooling is unregulated, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. They do not ban the box here, so you got to check that. But as one guy put it, I was reading this article on it, and the guy said everyone here is pretty much a felon anyway, so that box is irrelevant. I thought that was funny. Obviously, it's not true, but it was still funny. Alaska is one of the other states that has no helmet law. Number four, New Mexico. New Mexico has a bunch of different things that make people feel that it's a very free state. Number one, their incarceration rate is really low. It didn't used to be, but it's gotten better. Especially when you factor in drug and non-drug incarcerations are really low these days. The devil's lettuce was legalized in 2021, which I'm sure in the future will drive their incarceration rate down even further. The land of enchantment is just one of two states that have both a broad Religious Freedom Restoration Act and a broad equal rights amendment connecticut being the other one new mexico also has no motorcycle helmet law so that's a plus for people that are into motorcycles that hate wearing helmets now there's a lot of ins and outs on this next one but from 2013 to 2017 physician assisted suicide was legalized there was some ins and outs to this for a couple of years but on january 7th 2021 the Elizabeth Whitefield End of Life Option Act was introduced. It went through some different things all through their little state house and all the voting and all that other stuff. And on April 8th, 2021, the governor signed it into law. Now that one's a little weird and I know there's going to be some, you know, conversation about it, but this isn't just about one freedom. This is about all of them. And to some people that's very important, especially if you have a terminal illness and you don't feel like going through the pain. New Mexico is also a castle doctrine state. In case you forgot from two minutes ago, that means if someone breaks into your house, you can put some holes in them and more than likely still make it to the family dinner that night. Number three, Colorado. Colorado is known for its freedom. It's kind of got that Old West spirit. Maybe not like Texas, Oklahoma, Arizona, but the people that moved to Colorado were really much that frontiers type people back in the day. Well, that spirit can still be found in the attitude of a lot of the residents of Colorado. They are one of the first states to legalize the devil's lettuce. There's a great story that I've talked about before, but Peyton Manning talked about how when they legalized that, he owned like five or six Papa John's in Denver. As soon as they legalized that, he made a mint. Legalized gambling and gun rights are above average in Colorado, as you can imagine. Their beer, wine, and spirit taxes are better than the national average. And in 2016, voters approved physician-assisted suicide. The only one knock that I should mention is when it comes to the guns, they did ban large capacity magazines. Number two, Nevada. Yeah, imagine that. Nevada has a lot of freedom. If you know anything about Nevada, you know they're going to be kind of up for anything. They have legalized prostitution, legalized gambling. Alcohol flows freely in this state. The devil's lettuce is legal here since about 2016. And when it comes to firearms, they have a history of being very open about it. You know, very much a Second Amendment state. But they started making some adjustments over the years. And in 2019, they started extensive background checks. Open carry is pretty much a thing there, but there is no permitless concealed carry in Nevada. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There is a link down below. We'd love it if you go over there and check it out. All right, on to number one. 
And number one, Maine. This one blew me away. I'm sure a lot of you are surprised right now, but Maine is very much considered the most free state we have. And I'm going to tell you why. To start things off, let's look at their guns. So first of all, there's no waiting period and there's no universal background check. It is a constitutional carry state. It is castle doctrine only, and there's no bans and no capacity limits. They don't have a lot of crime and they don't incarcerate a lot of their citizens. They actually have one of the best criminal justice systems in the United States. The devil's lettuce is good to go here. Maine is very much a progressive state with sound gun laws. All right, that's today's video. This one was very much broad brushed and I'm sure we're gonna get a whole bunch of comments in the comment section about, I should have mentioned this, I should have mentioned that, that's how it goes. When you touch on subjects like what we had in this video, that should be entertaining. All right, everyone, have a great day. And be nice to each other.